Hi guys, PJ here with a look at Call of Duty World War 2 on PC. Now the PC release has got some quite nice funky options on it for resolution and all the rest of it. For I thought we'd go through all the settings and all the options that the game has. Um, straight off the bat, it detected Xbox controller straight away, so we know that controller support is there. Likewise, DS4 controller also works straight off the bat, so we're looking good. Now this game seems to be picking up momentum. It's certainly doing better on PC than the other Call of Duties. A lot of them just sort of die off really quickly. This one seems to be establishing a decent user base, so um, it's looking good. So if we go straight into this, straight into settings. Now you'll notice some are in an ultra-wide display and that the menu hasn't filled the display. Ignore that, the game does fill the display. Okay, so it's just this menu is set up for 16 by 9 Likewise, I've tried it on a 4K HDR TV and resolution to scale up to 4K, no problem at all. It does also detect everything and it will let me seamlessly switch between the ultra wide display and the 4K TV. A lot of games have a bit of a dicky fit when you try and do that. This particular one, you can tab between the two, no problem. So, straight on, going into settings. Um, we'll do graphics last because that's the biggest one, yeah? Controls. Obviously, you've got keyboard mouse. And the game plays fantastic on keyboard and mouse. Nice and responsive, as you'd expect. Certainly a lot faster than a gamepad. If you've got the ability, you used to play on keyboard and mouse, I highly advise you use that rather than a gamepad in a Call of Duty game. However, that's not to say it doesn't work, because it does work very well. So, gamepad. You've got gamepad enabled and disabled there. Obviously, if you've got multiple gamepads, it will show up, and you can switch between them should you wish. Stick layout there, we have default. And um, we have Southpaw Legacy, or left Southpaw, leave it on default, yeah. Uh, button layout, default tactical, as they call it. Lefty, uh, Nomad, Nom4D, Nomad. And Nomad Tactical, Nomad Lefty, and Bumper Jumper. Where do, where, seriously, where do they get these names from? I mean, come on. <laughs> bumper jumper um bumper jumper tactical and charlie one-handed gunslinger well, these get more crazy by the minute uh stick and move scout brawler beast well everybody's gonna jump to beast mode straight away is this on a playstation no okay so default tactical little joke there guys playstation pro beast mode boost mode no forget it okay so Flip LBRB and LTRT. Leave that as disabled. I need this back on default, don't I really? There we go. Right, look inversion. Enable disable. Controller vibration enable disable. And horizontal sensitivity. Now you want to crank these up a little bit because it's a hell of a lot slower than keyboard mouse. Okay, so you know you won't be doing yourself any favours leaving it on medium, it's just too sluggish, you'll get slaughtered by people on mouse keyboard. Uh, these settings that are here, I've noticed, they are the same settings as the console response. Uh, you can play this game on console, it's, it's, it's sort of this sluggishness setting in a way, so uh, you might want to bump it up for PC use. Enable ADS sensitivity, uh, we've got enable and disable there, and you've also, when you enable it, got the horizontal and vertical sensitivity of that just disable that there we go input graph classic uh, it says here adjust the feel when aiming maps joystick deflection to turn rate so you got classic which is call of duty default linear uh, slight balanced and extreme just detail on the uh, right hand side of the screen there what all those do we'll go to classic aim assist enabled disabled auto weapon switch enabled disabled Auto Mantle, again, Enable Disabled. Hustle Sprint Cancel, Enable Disable. And what we got, Aim Assist Rotation. Yep, yeah, you guessed it, Enable Disable. And an Aim Assist Slowdown, Enable Disable. What else have we got? Back to the top, hooray. Okay, so, Key Bindings, which are greyed out because I'm on controller. I think you can all guess what key bindings is. Yeah, you can configure all your keys. It's not rocket science. Mouse settings, you can uh, speed your mouse up and stuff. Let's see if I can... Will it auto-switch back? No. 
let's disable gamepad a minute so we can all have a look and see go back key bindings there you go auto weapon switch enable disable and then you've got all the rest that you can switch around to your heart's content uh, there's quite a few pause the video if you need to have a look at this but as you'd expect really it's normal aw you know sd sort of sort of configuration standard issue keys but you can change it if you wish there we go that is all of them there down to 38 uh, you could probably jump some of these around a little bit for comfort but overall they're pretty handy where they are so let's go back mouse settings there you go horizontal vertical sensitivity settings enable AES sensitivity we've just covered that with the controller there invert mouse smooth mouse raw mouse input so high frequency polling of the usb hardware there we go yes or no leave it on yes okay let's go back let me switch back to control pad let's try it come on switch back oh dear it doesn't like it now it's dead it's not switching back <sighs> come on sledgehammer you can do this sledgehammer games my control pad won't switch back so what we're gonna have to do is go back into control go back to gamepad enable you would think really we would do it on the fly but never mind it's any minor minor grumble so audio volume subtitles enable disable hit feedback volume that's it it's bare bones minimum there's not even your home cinema headphones stereo setting there's no 5.1 stereo 7.1 setting um dolby atmos nah i don't see it auto detecting anything i had it plugged into a 5.1 dolby dts system and nothing changed it was still in stereo so if you guys have got any form of surround working on this game if you could please pop that in the comments to update me because it is not working for me at all it appears to be just a stereo game sound effects are pretty good they're okay but it's stereo okay uh what else have we got then graphics of course display mode now you've got a vram usage indicator there on the right hand side and it does appear to be fairly accurate so i've had msi afterburner running and from what i can see that is spot on okay so we have windowed no border and windowed one other thing worth mentioning on this when you boot the game up it will immediately moan at you if you haven't got the most up-to-date graphics driver possible every time i load this game uh, it moans at me saying update your driver update your driver okay some of us are not updating our driver specific reason but this game will not quit so every single time you load the game if you haven't got that latest driver you are going to get a warning it gets quite annoying but i suppose they want you to push forward okay so brightness there up and down colorblind filter colorblind filter mode colorblind filter intensity show blood enable disable optimize video personally found this a little bit on the sort of easy side you can definitely push your settings higher than what this optimized video if you click this it will try and adjust everything so your game runs at the best it can on your hardware I managed to get it running certainly prettier looking uh, than the optimized setting. I mean, optimized video there uses two and a half gigabytes of VRAM on a four gigabyte VRAM card, and I was only using 70% of the card in game. So you can definitely tweak it better. You have to fiddle with it to your own, you know, heart's content. On this, advanced settings. So still running my prehistoric R9290X approximately equivalent to an rx 580 just obviously four gigabyte rather than the eight gigabyte uh, of vram a little bit slower core clock speed <coughs> excuse me 1250 megahertz is what they run at so a little bit slower there but um you know it's got bonuses in other areas it's an old card like i say very power hungry so we've got monitor at the moment i've only got it plugged into this monitor so it's not showing the tv hdr hdr output is off because this monitor is not hdr however like i say the tv is so that does light up it does enable which is pretty good screen refresh rate there 
Uh, this monitor's overclocked to 75. Obviously, you guys will be 144s and stuff, 120s. Yep, yeah, go for it. You do get options, like I say, to switch between them, depending what you've got. Bear in mind that some of the 4K HDR TVs, you'll notice this, if they've got more than one HDMI slot, some of your HDMI slots may only take a 30 hertz input. Now, if that's the case, you're going to limit your game down to 30 frames per second. So sometimes you have to use your primary HDI, HDMI input, HDMI 1. Example, my TV's got five HDMI inputs and three of them are, own, are configured for 4K60 HDR. The other ones are 30 hertz. So, yeah, a bit of a tip there with TVs. They're, they're a pain in the neck. So if, you, if you're running um, two consoles, say, for example, both running HDR, and then, uh, I don't know, some sort of TV box in the, the third one, that leaves you fourth one for your PC. You're only going to run 30 hertz, you might switch your them around. Or just stick to your monitor. That's what I do. Okay, sync every frame on and off. There is no half sync or anything like that. Um, I'll leave that off because I've got a free sync monitor, so it's not needed. Again, if you've used a G sync monitor, you won't need it either. Aspect ratio we got 21x9, 16x9, 16x10, standard 4x3, and auto. However, be warned, I have found that auto does not work with my monitor. It came up as a 16x9. Clearly it is not. So there's a, there's a bit of a bit of an iffy one there. It might work on your monitor, it might not. So choose your monitor is my recommendation. FOV, uh, 50. That is the console default. Obviously you can whack that up all the way to 75, I think I had it to. No, more. I'm lying. 80, sorry. 80, there we go. A nice boost seems to be around 70, just gives you a little bit more vision. Display resolution, that's going to depend entirely on your monitor and your graphics card, what it will push out. Um, literally, like I say, I can display 4K on my TV, but I can't play this game in ultra settings on 4K. Graphics card is just not powerful enough. That depends. You guys with your GTX 1070s, 1080, 1080Ti's or Vegas, you can you know, easily 4K this game. It's not that tricky to run. Okay, so what else have we got? Render resolution. And I've got it at native. So native res, yeah? And it says here, render resolution. Choose the resolution used for 3D scene rendering. Reduce to improve video card performance set to native to match resolution. It does improve your video card performance, but it also makes the game look a bit pixelated. So try and keep it at native if you can. If you push it higher, it'll downsample. So it'll look better, but it's going to be a lot more intensive on your graphics card. So if you've got the power, push it, downsample it, it'll look nice. But I'll keep it on native. As you can see there, my options go right the way up to 5120 be 2160. Not a chance. Not with this GPU. No way. So what else we got? Pre-TX2 resolution, and their read up is set the temporal up sampling resolution, reduced to improve performance, only applicable when using T2X based anti-aliasing setting. Again, it will improve your jaggies, your edges, etc. Again, it's a bit a uh, bit hungry on GPU power. So uh, if you're running like GTX 970 type card. Don't push this higher, you know, if, you, if you're running that sort of card, that sort of era, that sort of spec, um, leave it alone, really. You know, it's for high-end users to make it look really nice. Okay, so we've got post-process anti-aliasing. This is recommended filmic, SMAA T2 recommended. Okay, there are others, as you can see. There's one time, and it even has a little display there on the right-hand side showing you the differences between them. And as you can see, it's it's quite a lot actually. We're on the max, um, and then you lose look all sorts of stuff as you go down off. So we'll leave that on the max, okay? It's normally not that intensive post processing, so you, you could probably leave this high up. Certainly, if you've got a high-end card, you can. But you know, Steam survey shows that the GTX 970, 980 is still the more sort of common ground GTX 1060-ish card. So um, yeah, you should be able to push that one quite high. 
Texture options. These are normally GPU intensive. So run extra as default. Uh, we've got low. And again, nice little display picture on the right showing you the differences that it's making. Medium. Or normal rather. High and extreme. Not too much difference between high and extreme. So you could probably niche that down a little bit if you wanted to. Um, normal map resolution. So we're on high. Yeah, not extreme. Extreme there. A little bit more sort of shadow coming in. If you look at the tank tracks and the wall. Yeah, not much. And then you go me normal, which is fuzzy mode. Uh, that's like PS4 type, Xbox One type. Uh, setting and then you've got low blurry and like I say back up to extra we'll leave it on high specular map resolution uh, this is something tricky to spot in game to be honest I mean there you go there's high and extra lot not much in it is there really normal and low you could knock that down you know safely to normal or high without really noticing in game so do as you will with that one. If you want to save a bit of VRAM or your GPU is struggling to keep 60 frames per second, certainly not that one down. Sky resolution. Um, normal. Yeah. Low. Not much in it. It makes your clouds a bit blurrier. You're not really going to be looking at the clouds when somebody's firing a bloody gun at you, are you? So you'd probably keep this down and keep your performance up. But anyway, normal. High, normal and low. No high. So there you go, that's your sky, not much in it. Um, put it on normal. Shader preload on. Um, it says here, preload shader prior to gameplay incurs longer level load to eliminate potential hitching during gameplay. This is true. If you've got stuttering in game, put this on. So it'll load all your shader cache up first before you start the game rather than trying to do it on the fly while you're running the game. I would highly recommend you enable that. I've got this installed on an SSD. Um, if you've got it installed on an SSD, you won't have any real real problems, to be honest with you. HDD, try and keep it on a 7200 speed or above. 5400 speed, you're going to definitely notice the shader loading in if you haven't got this enabled. So SSD install is good for this game. Anastropic filtering, we have high and low and normal. Low, normal and high, if you like. Again, doesn't make too much difference. Looks slight blur in there, but you know, again, if you want to save performance, you can notch that down. Shadows on. Oops, see, he's went all the way to the top there. Come here. That's a weird bug. Press right on shadows and it goes to the top of the menu. What's, what's going on there then? Okay. Odd. Very odd. Okay. Where were we? Shadows, yeah? Shadow map resolution. Uh, high end and max is, is not too bad. So there's extra. There's high. Medium takes a hit. Or normal, rather. And there's no low. So it's just normal, high, and extra. Shadow depth. We're on high, and there's normal. Quite a bit of difference there, so we'll probably leave that one on if possible. Screen spaced shadows always on. Again, big difference. But you've also got auto on, depending on performance hit. Screen space reflections, uh, high and off, and normal. Yeah, you can see that difference, can't you? Especially on the cobbles and the water. So, leave that one on. Cache sun shadow maps. Warning, very memory intensive. Only recommended for video cards with at least 4 gigabytes of video memory. Please disable if you're experiencing texture streaming issues that result in blurry textures. Hmm. Okay. So, we've got that one on. And there is off, of course. Yeah. Depth of field, low, normal, high, and off. Put it on low. Something I'm never too fussed about, to be honest. Motion blur. We've got low quality, medium quality, 
high quality and off. So we'll leave that on low. I'm not a fan of motion blur either. Screen space, ambient occlusion. Uh, options are Hemi AO. And what else have we got? HBAO, GTAO low, GTAO high. You can see the effects there as we flip between them. Medium distance ambient occlusion, on and off. Yep, yeah. okay, leave that one on. Subsurface scattering, if you look at the face there, we're on off at the minute, on. Not a massive thing, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's not that intensive, so it'll be up to you. And that is literally all your settings. So, shall we have a look in game? Okay guys, we're about to jump into some gameplay just to see what the game looks like and how it responds. Um, I've just noticed after going through all that that my uh, feed there was stuttery. Really clever me, had a bit of a sort out, cleaned all the dust out of the computer, plugged the camera back in one of the low speed USB sockets, so hence the stutter. Sorry about that, fool's error. Oh well, moving on. Right, okay, so um, we're not playing this to, you know, show gameplay. I'm sure you all know what a COD plays like. We're just keeping an eye on the monitor to the left there. And we'll see uh, how the campaign maxes things out. Cause the campaign is obviously going to be, in my opinion, more graphically intensive than the actual multiplayer side of things. Loading. Okay. We're on an SSD, so we should, should load quickly. Very quickly. Okay, so that took a minute, roughly. <laughs> To, to load and that's on an SSD. Funnily enough the loading ended just after the cutscene ended. Makes you wonder doesn't it? Oh well. Okay so can we skip any of this? Looks pretty good. What have we got? 59 frames per second lock. Yeah 60 frames per second basically. VRAM at 3 gigabytes. CPU running between 50 and 70 on all cores. So not doesn't appear to be CPU intensive at this point. Can we skip? Come on, we need to skip. No skip. Okay, so after a one minute loading scene and then another cutscene, a 30 frames per second cutscene I might add, which is on 16 by 9 mode, so black bars inside, we had a two minute cutscene loading area. And now we're finally in sort of semi-control of the character. 3.8 gigabytes of VRAM at the moment used. I must admit the graphics do look impressive. I really do like the look of this new game. Uh, not everything maxed out as you've seen. So there's room to take this game even further if you've got the graphics card and the CPU etc to do it. So I'd say this is a mix of, you know, max and high settings. And uh, it does look good. Very good. Here we go! Drop the rip! There's no cover! 48 frames per second, 44 frames per second. 33 frames per second there. Recording with uh, Radeon Relive normally takes 2 to 3 frames per second sort of hit. So uh, you can sort of add a couple of frames on here and there. Sixteen frame rates all over the shop at the moment. Get your head down and keep moving. Okay, so let's try moving. Thirty-six frames per second. No, that's not ideal. Can we try running. No, it's cutting again, taking control. To get that elusive 60 would definitely have to take a hit here on the graphics and turn them down somewhat Daniels, this is what you train for now pick up that banger it is a good looking game though you can do this oh well, yes, I guess sir. he's armless sorry that was bad oh, okay 70 yards yeah we're looking at the floor Thirty-six frames per second. Okay, so can we? No, we can't do options, or we can graphics. 
what can we change if we hit optimize video right now let's see if it gives us 60 frames per second optimize video yes optimize video settings for your current pc configuration two and a half gigabytes of vram apparently hmm. and what has that given us it has given us it's left the fov higher than it should be might turn that down a tad actually because it was on 50. And it's left everything pretty oh we got a low here for sky res has this actually worked oh yeah screen space shadows are on off now sun shadows are off low depth of field low quality okay so it's taken quite a hit on the settings there guys let's have a look at how the game looks 62 frames per second we're still there though 53 46 41 frames per second it's definitely not good as a lock 60 cpu usage sort of 70 80 percent gpu well there you go gpu is at 74 percent that's really odd gonna make it I'll be dead and he's dead okay so that's weird let's turn everything down to the very lowest setting and see what VRAM we can get away with okay and are we gonna have to restart the game or MSI to get the readout working correctly because it doesn't look like it's correct to me so if we go all the way down to advanced we're going to drop my refresh down as well. Okay, we're back. Sync every frame. No. FOV down to 50. Display res will keep the same, all native, yeah. Textures. This is the one that's going to give us some breathing space if you've got like a 2 gigabyte VRAM card. Let's see if we can see what it will go down to that's uh, VRAM intensive isn't it let's turn that off okay low shadows off Yeesh. shadow map it doesn't really matter they're off oh well shadow depth just normal there off Yep, turn everything off. Low quality off. Off. What was that? Subsurface scattering. Off. Okay, that's as low as it'll go. Reckons we're using 2.3 gigabytes of VRAM, and MSI display also shows that. So this is as low as it goes without dropping your resolution down. Not something I'd want to do. We will have a look at a 1080. Okay, so we're on 60 frames per second. 57, 64, 71. It is a bit all over the shop, to be fair. Let's run behind this tank. The game looks a little bit Xbox 360. I'm not getting shot to pieces, that is. My tank's dead. It looks very Xbox 360. But we have got I'm very good at this game, am I? We have got the game running at a decent frame rate. So what we got fifty six, I think, is probably the lowest. No, fifty four. I just saw. Okay, so we're using. Well, two and a half gigabyte VRAM, you could say. Okay, let's see if we can knock it down a bit more in some way or another. Uh, 
1920 by 1080. A lot of people still game at that, yeah? Okay. This should give us a boost. 1080. Accept. 1920 by 1080. Click. Do you want to keep? Yes. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. This is going to be weird. So we've got 1920 It's not like in my ultra-wide display, is it? He can tell. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> as much as I would like to, it doesn't... There we go. There's low. Good grief. Check that out. What's the VRAM usage? Still 2 gigabytes. So... Hmm. We'll go with these optimized settings again. There we go. So I think you can see, guys, that on an AMD hardware, it's not using all your GPU or your CPU, but you still get your frame rates all over the shot. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that, to be honest. Nice looking game, but not a steady frame rate. Not a steady one at all. Oh well, I think we'll wrap this up at this moment. Um, if you've got any questions on this, please drop them in the comments below. I'm hopefully giving you an idea of how the game runs, how it looks like and what options are available to you. If you found that useful in the slightest, please click like. It does help and uh, you know I'll see you in future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.